In this video, I'm going to show you how to solve radical equations graphically and algebraically. So to begin, let's take a look at an example. So I wanted to determine the roots of the square root of x plus 7 equals to 3. And let's do this algebraically first. So we are going to first rewrite this, so I have it down here. And then what I'm going to do is, because I have a square root, the opposite of square rooting is to square. I'm going to square both sides so that I can get rid of the radical symbol on the left side. The result will be x plus 7 equal to 9. And then solving for x, I get 2. Now, I also want to identify any restrictions. And the restrictions are based on what is inside the radical. So in this case here, we have x plus 7, which is written inside the radical. And I know that when I square root, that value has to be greater or equal to 0. So I'm going to set x plus 7 greater or equal to 0. And then when I solve that, I get x is greater or equal to negative 7. And that is a restriction for this equation, whether I solve it algebraically or graphically. All right, so now let's go to the graph. The graph, I'm going to rewrite the equation by moving the 3 to the left side and then setting it equal to 0, which is similar to now to set it equal to y. Okay, I'm going to draw a table of values. And I'm going to start with the values that make my radical inside to be 0. So the x value would be negative 7. So if I choose negative 7, I get 0 and then minus 3, and then that would give me negative 3 for my y value. Um, our next nice convenient value is to pick negative 6 because that when I add 7, I get 1, and I can square root 1 to get 1, and then minus 3, I get negative 2. Um, the next nice number would be negative 3 because negative 3 plus 7 is 4. Square rooting 4 gives me 2. 2 minus 3 gives me negative 1. And let's pick one more. So I know that 2 plus 7 is 9. Square root 9 minus 3 is going to be zero. So plotting these four points, I have negative seven, negative three, negative six, negative two, negative three, negative one, and two zero. Now this first value here is my starting point. So I know that this is where the race starts and then I'm going to graph with an arrow on the right side going to the right. All right, so from here, I can also see that my x-intercept is 2. It doesn't matter what the y value is, because in my original equation, we were only solving for x. So over here, we can also say that the root is 2. So remember that the roots of the radical equation are equal to the x-intercepts of the graph. And that corresponds with the radical function. So remember, they're called roots when we solve a function, and they're called x-intercepts when we look at a graph. Let's take a look at another example. Now, this next example um, we're going to do According to the title, we can see that our next example will involve an extraneous solution. Now remember that an extraneous solution means that it's going to have solutions that are extra, ones that we probably don't want. Now we've seen that when solving by graphing, we can isolate the function on one side and find the x-intercepts like we did above. Or we can use a system of two equations and find the intersection points of the two graphs. Now, either way, the solutions, remember, are only going to be the 
x values because in the equation we only have x values there are actually no y values here so when we find the point in the graph remember that we are only going to extract the x value for this example here let's start algebraically I'm going to rewrite my equation so I have x plus 2 equals to x minus 4 and similar to the one above I'm going to square both sides so that I can isolate my radical on the left side I get x plus 2 now don't forget that on the right side remember that when I square I really have x minus 4 and another x minus 4 okay so this gives me x squared minus oh not 16 but minus 8x and then plus 16 let's move all our terms to one side and we get x 0 equals x squared minus 9x plus 14. we have the set equal to 0 and we see that this equation can be factored to x minus 7 times x minus 2 so i have two solutions of 7 and 2. all right so we can do a check and we have 7 plus 2 and that's going to equal 7 minus 4 so i get root 9 equals 3 so 3 equals 3 which is great let's plug in 2 2 plus 2 equals to 2 minus 4 on the left i get square root of 4 on the right i have negative 2 and 2 actually does not equal negative 2. so therefore x equals 2 is what we call an extraneous root and it's needed uh, we need to write that down so therefore our only solution here is x is only equal to 7. now let's take a look at what this looks like graphically now in the first example i moved all of the terms to one side so what we're doing this one let's separate them so we're going to have y1 equals to square root of x plus 2 and then we'll also graph y2 we'll call it equal to x minus 4. now remember that x plus 2 has to be greater or equal to 0 and our restriction is that x has to be greater or equal to negative 2. so if i draw my table i'm going to actually start with negative 2 as my starting point and remember we're just plugging it into the left side and which is just root x plus 2 do not include the x minus 4. when i plug in negative 2 my y value is 0. i plug in negative 1 plus 2 is 1 plug in 2, 2 plus 2 is 4, square root of 4 is 2, let's do one more point, 7 square root of 9 is 3, so I'm going to plot these four points, and I'm going to connect them to make a nice smooth curve, and now I'm going to graph the line, I'm just going to graph this with my y-intercept of negative 4, and my slope is 1 over 1, so I'm going to plot these points here and I'm going to connect them Oops. and I can see that these two graphs connect intersect here and that point is 7 and 3 however remember we only want the x value so therefore x is 7 which corresponds to my solution algebraically the last example i'm going to do is to solve this equation here algebraically and let me rewrite it so i'll have some space here to draw on top of it so what i want to do again i have the radical isolated already on the left side so i'm going to square both sides 
And when I do that, I get 18 minus 2x squared on the left equals to x squared plus 2x plus 1. Now again, remember this means x plus 1 times x plus 1 because of the squared. Let's move everything to my right side so that I can have a positive x squared. So 3x squared plus 2x minus 17. And this one seems a little bit more complicated to factor, so I'm going to use my quadratic formula. So x is going to equal negative 2, which is my b. So this is my a value, b and c, plus or minus the square root 2 squared minus 4 times 3 times negative 17. So 4 times a times c. And all of this is going to be over 2 times a, which is Three. All right, so plugging this into my calculator, the inside of my square root is going to be 208, all divided by 6. Now I do want to simplify my radical. So x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus 4 root 13. So from the 208, I can see that is equal to 16 times 13, or you can try other numbers which might not be as big, but you'll eventually get to 4 root 13. All of this will be over 6. And I can simplify this so we can see that all three of these numbers are divisible by 2. So when I divide them all by 2, I'm going to get negative 1 plus or minus 2 root 13 all over 3. Now what I do is I recommend that you check both solutions, the positive and the negative. Okay, uh, you'll find that the positive one does work, but then here you can see that we have negative one minus two root 13, which means that my numerator will be negative divided by positive. The whole solution will be negative. And because I have negative one already minusing this, uh, you can probably maybe guess that this is going to be bigger than plus one or positive one. So when I take a larger negative number, add one, my right side is actually going to be negative. So you can check with a calculator if you like, but we can see that x equals to negative 1 minus 2 root 13 divided by 3 is actually going to be extraneous. So therefore, my only solution is going to be negative 1 plus 2 root 13 all divided by 3. And that's how you solve algebraically and graphically.